do you sometimes hate when there's like two potential avenues to do and there's not a clear answer and it's just it just gets your goat because you know or maybe or maybe worse than that there's something you really want and then something else that you have to do and you just can't have them both or maybe things don't go your way well you're in luck because today's episode we're going to be talking about either way everything's going to be fine this is the existential soak podcast i'm randy that's danny what's going on danny What's up, Randy? Yeah, so this is an interesting one. I actually heard this. It was a story from one of the books. I think it was, I, oh, what's the name of the book? Anyways, I'll remember it later. But it was Feeling talking good? about- Feeling great? N- not, oh, I know, surprisingly really? not that one. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I, oh, it's called The Way Out. It was, an, it was a book about uh, okay. like uh, pain, psycho, psychosomatic pain called The Way Out. Very about, good book. About uh, escape rooms. Yeah, right? <laughs> that too. Uh, and so- it was talking about Tina Fey uh, back when she was in her 40s and she was having a she went to her doctor and she was like having a mental breakdown because she was like, do I pursue my career or do I have a second child? Because oh, that is a tough I'm, question, at the point, yeah. I'm at the point in my life where like. If it's it's really hard to get your career back if you let it go at this point. But I'm also at the point in my life where if I don't have another child now, it's going to be really hard to have one later. And her doctor said to her, you know, either way, it's going to be all right. But, it, you know, and it will, though. That's the funny thing. Like we I think we you know, we forget to like the value of a given path, choice or action is totally relative and subjective. And. More often than not, we are so like, I think we forget to like how adaptable we are and how able and like how quickly we can just get comfortable with a norm, no matter what it is. I think about this a lot. Like you look at people that like <clears throat> get convicted in prison on, 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 you know, that especially the ones that are like innocent didn't do it like that sucks. But you have no choice at that point, but to just keep living your life. And like, yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they don't struggle and they're not mad and angry and stuff. But you see a lot of them over time, like you do end up like, you know, they they figure out a way to, to deal with it. Right. Because it's like that's part of being a human being is like no matter what happens to us, in a sense, we we figure out a way to deal with it. And each path is going to provide things that you can't imagine. Right. You know, it's it's like looking back on your life and being like, well, I wish I didn't do that. It's like, well, if you didn't do that, though, a lot of things would have changed. Right. And so it's like, do you want to get rid of all of that? Because you don't know which choices would have come up. So, yeah, it's very, it's a really good point there to make, I think. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I like what you said there about the prison example, because that's kind of, it, that illustrates the dichotomy of control. Because once that happens to you, like, let's say you get sentenced for a crime you didn't do, you have to go to prison, you you learn all about how to hold on to soap and not drop it. You and, also learn about a lot of things that are not in your control. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And so, like, but it's all of a sudden you need to recognize, well, that's not in my control. I can't undo that. I can't change that. There are things that I can try to to change it. Like, I can try to appeal it or different things like that. But how do I make the best of the situation? Yeah. And I think that's the important thing, too, is asking yourself, like, how can I, like, make the best of what I have, right? Because it's interesting, too, like, you know, in that case, I think that's an interesting example, too, like, because that's a really... Because, you know, she is famous. She got a, a Tina Fey. I mean, you know, she has a really, you know, she has a really good career and all. And like, so I could see that tension there, too, because like at that age, you're also at that age where like having a child is going to get harder. But it's like there are other options still, though, even beyond that, like she could adopt and stuff, you know, whatever. Like there's so mm-hmm. many other things you can do, too. And you don't know, you know, either path. There probably are going to be fine. Right. Like Especially but in her situation. It, <laughs> like, yeah. But it's also interesting because we at those moments like i know i can think back to my life at at moments like that and it's like we think we can read the future like we think we can see the way down both of these paths and but there's we're terrible at predicting the future we are and you know it's funny it also reminds me of like that i you know like when people um like younger people or something think about having a kid and like well we're waiting till this is set up and this is set up and then people will be like well there's no right time you know and It's the same with like a lot of decisions in life where sometimes you can prepare all you want, but like if you don't have a very clear idea of what your goal is for that preparation, 
there's always going to be other things you can make better before you introduce this new change. So a lot of times it's better to just pull the trigger because like thinking about it, you know, doing these sort of like vague preparations, it's just kicking that can down the road forever. I remember that even when we were like thinking about like transitioning like our careers originally, like I was super scared of doing that. And like at the same time, though, I knew I didn't want to do what I was doing. And it's like it was kind of nice that we did just pull the trigger randomly almost because that helps. It does help kind of force you to just make a decision. And then, you know, things happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting. I remember some analogy about like learning an instrument or something like that and it taking 10 years and like adding your age and be like, I don't want to be 10 years older and still learning to play the piano or whatever. And it's like, well, you're going to be 10 years older anyways. So you might yeah, if you well want to just... be 10 years, if you want to learn, if you want to be a pianist at 10, in 10 years from now, you yeah. might as well start now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it yeah. is. But, you know, it's funny because like we were talking about this. I don't know which episode, but, you know, because you've been reading those books and like about like, cognitive mm-hmm. distortions and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think so much of our problems are just from that anyway. These beliefs yeah. that we either have more control, that we can predict the future, you know, or that our decisions will have such a huge impact on our overall happiness and stuff. And it is mm-hmm. hard, don't get me wrong, we've talked about regret before. Like, you know, I think it's important to do things or try things so that you don't regret them if there's stuff that's really important to you. Um, and But figuring that out too, a lot of times, like in these situations, like Tina Fey's or like whatever, like, you know, Getting clear about like what really is valuable to you, what really matters the most. Is it like your career? Is it the kid? Because that, mm-hmm. you know, could be a situation of regret, and therefore that should probably influence the decision too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know they say about regrets more oftentimes it's the things you didn't do than the things you did. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean generally it's always I think, isn't it? Most often. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I'm trying to I'm trying to think of instances where it was regretting something that you did, but I don't know. Come to me later. Well, it's, you know, I've always found that hard because it's like, well, kind of similar to what I said before, right? You're, you've already lived through it, and so to like, it's like negative oh, yeah. wishing. You're, you're looking like, at it with hindsight. Yeah. Like, had you you had limited knowledge back then, and had you known what you know now, you clearly wouldn't have made that decision. But like, you didn't have that knowledge back then. You gained that yeah. knowledge from making the decision, and not mm-hmm. to mention everything else that's changed in your life was probably a consequence or in some way related to that decision. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it is interesting. Though. I think about it a lot because I think this is something where, like, especially people, um, you know, we transition careers. People are in that position of thinking about that. This is a this is probably something that stops them, right? This fear that like it won't be okay. But it's like, you know, if you're already unhappy in your current life, what is there to lose? And you know, it's funny. You are okay. You are fine. I mean, you're not like dying or anything. You know. So what is there to lose? I think, well, we're not dying in the short term. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We are always dying. That's true. But <laughs> well, that so like when I when I heard it the last time, it was I was kind of at a place where I was I was a bit unsettled. And when I heard, when I just heard in the book them say that, like either way it's going to be all right, I felt something inside of me just go like, ah, yeah, you know, like because <laughs> it, it will. Like, like... Oh yeah, I forgot that. Either way, it's going to be all right. Either way, time's going to move on. Either way, I'm going to die, never be remembered. It's going to be all right. Yeah. Either way, that stuff's all going to happen. It was funny, you know. It's funny you mentioned that. Like that was one of the things I remember when I first read Camus and Existentials, and that like really got me was that like because they all really are like you know this we all have this one life. There's nothing after this, and a lot of people will initially view that as depressing, right, or sad, or whatever. But to them, it's like, so that means there's no, everything's permitted. There's no rule. Do whatever is right for you. Because in the end of the day, it doesn't matter. This is your one blip, <laughs> you know, your time. And I think it frees you up a lot from the social, because I think so much of our indecision and struggles with decision has to do more with external things than internal. It has to do with pressures from the outside, perceived expectations, perceived obligations, all that crap, values, Right wanting to be part of the norm rather than, you know, do our own thing. And we forget that this is like our one chance and really none of that actually matters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I actually just had an experience like this this past week where there's something that I took on that I didn't really want to take on, but it wasn't like a straightforward yes or no, because if you would have asked me just straightforward yes or no, the answer would have been no. But there were so many other like conditions on this, like the relationship 
depending I can guess it, what it all is. Other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. So like, it, it's crazy. Cause I was, I was thinking about it afterwards and it caused like a little bit of friction in the relationship and it was palpable for both people. And it was, uh, and then I addressed it afterwards. I was like, listen, I just felt like I was kind of like backed into a corner. I couldn't, I, I didn't feel free to say no because it wasn't just a simple yes or no question. It was like, you know, does this relationship mean anything? Blah, 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 whatever, whatever else I made it be. But it's just like, yeah, things aren't always straightforward. No, they're not. But I think a lot rarely of ever. that, rarely ever, but I think also a lot of that, like, you know, a lot of that, uh, the reasons why there were also things we're putting onto it, you know, because like, I do wonder sometimes, like, if you talk to the other person, honestly, like, would they see it that way? Mm -hmm. Like, as the relationship being a factor in it like that, or as these things being a factor? Is it stuff you're yeah, just probably. putting onto it, you know? Yeah, probably. It's funny. Oh, yeah, probably. I mean, it happens, I, right? I just need approval. I just, I'm seeking approval and love and validation yeah. <laughs> externally. That's it. <laughs> That's all it is, right? Yeah, it's yeah. funny. The, yeah. uh, oh, God. Well, it's like when people, you know, it's one thing, like, when, because, you know, I've had family members like guilt trip, right? You or something. Because a lot of people experience that. That always annoys the hell out of me. Because it's like, you know, <laughs> don't try and tell me I have obligations yeah. that, whether you know, and act mm -hmm. like there are these real things because they're not. But like, I don't know. It is. It's interesting. But I think most people in most situations, we're adding that. It's not the other person adding that stuff to it. They're making it hard. Mm hmm. Yeah. I actually don't know where the hell yeah. I was going with that. I well, I was I was it. thinking about I I feel I'm always thinking about stuff, I guess. But I was it's hard, about right? The, Having shelf guns. How like, yeah, how like <laughs> you get a bunch of flack for not spending time with people in, in your family. But it's like you didn't get to choose your family. They're just who were there when you popped into this universe. All right. But then nobody gives you flack for getting a divorce with somebody you didn't get along with. And this yeah. was somebody that you chose actively that you were in love with and in such love that you want to spend your life with them. Most people are very and then, encouraging and like positive yeah. even about it. <laughs> but, but if it's family, no, that's family. And it's just, it, blew, it kind of blew my mind looking at it that way because I was like, that doesn't make sense at all. Like, what's wrong now, with people? Don't get me wrong. I think, you know, it's funny. I think we we have our society and like values and stuff probably don't mesh with like, the reality of like our our histories our past you know what i mean like in the sense of like evolution and stuff like yeah way back in the day when like a village was like eight families your family yeah. mattered because that was like your that was your unit and that gave you guys that power. was the only way that everybody survived exactly right and you relied on them for everything but like in this day and age yeah i agree like and you know it also depends on circumstances and stuff but the funny thing is like I think that's where that either way everything is fine too comes into play because that also is like a good perspective or attitude to take on things that helps you kind of focus on, well, I can make this good anyway. Good things are going to come out of this regardless. So it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. You know, maybe I just try things mm -hmm. out and see what happens or maybe I, you know, just choose and move on. <laughs> yeah. It's also funny too, is yeah. we act like we can't, I, I like, I mean, it's very rare when there's decisions that we can't remake. You know, especially mm. crap like that, like choices between these two paths. Like we can always reinvent ourselves. We can always change our course in life. And at the time that we're making the decision, though, it really does feel like a lot of times we can't. Like this is somehow final. I'll never make this. And there are cases, don't get me wrong, where like, you know, you know, I mean. Final answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just funny because I think, you know, like that situation, like she could change your mind in six months. Right. I mean, you could change your yeah. mind again. So. Yeah, I think that's a really good way mm -hmm. to look at it, though. Yeah, so there you have it. Either way, it'll be fine. Whatever you're worrying about, either way, it'll be fine. As you but said, we're all, all going to die this... anyway, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Probably sooner than later. So uh, that's all for this episode. If you did enjoy it, we got hundreds more episodes on YouTube, your favorite podcasting place, wherever. Uh, this is the Essential Soak Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. I'll see you later, Danny. Later, Randy.